FSU sports fans, welcome to Ram Zone. Watch your favorite coaches and players talk about the games, the plays, and the moments that define your favorite ASU teams. Now your host, Cameron Allen. Hey guys, welcome to Ram Zone. This week we've got a special guest, Coach Kevin Brooks of the Angelo State Baseball Team. Uh, last year's national championship in D2 baseball. Got to go to Cary, North Carolina. Yes. That's where we were, and uh, we're going to go ahead and get down to it. Coach, how was your day today? Uh, it's good, man. It's uh, sort of gloomy out there. That the cold front's getting ready to come, so I'm not looking forward to that. Yes, sir. Y'all got baseball here in Angelo. Shouldn't get nice till about Sunday. Yeah, I know, so we'll have to suck it up for a couple of days. And then it probably going to be colder if y'all went up to Oklahoma Christian this weekend. That is a good point, so we'll count our blessings, and, and thank God we're down south. Yes, sir, and uh, I just want to start off with uh, – could you tell us a little bit about your background in coaching? I know you bounced around some colleges after college. Yeah, so, uh, you know, I played at Baylor um, and then uh, got lucky enough to to get a job at opportunity at uh, the University of Incarnate Word in San Antonio. Um, was there for about four years, um, then went to Texas A&M, um, then UTSA, then uh Came, came out here and went to uh, Hardin-Simmons and then got uh, fortunate enough to, to be able to start the program here in uh, 2005 and been here ever since. Yes, sir. And so you came here in 2005, started the program. How have you liked San Angelo in your, I guess, 18 years being here? That's great. Yeah. And this is this is year 20 for us. So, um, you know, it's, it's amazing we've been here that long. You know, I grew up in Waco. Um, and, and so Waco's changed a lot. Um, obviously San Angelo, I'm sure has changed a lot in the last 20, 30 years, but, um, you know, it reminds me so much of, of Waco and, and the people are just, you know, that's what really separates it. The people are so great, so great to us, uh, support us so much. And they're just, you know, the nicest people in the world give you the shirt off of their back. And so it's been a great place to, to raise a family. And, uh, you know, and then try to go make some money to be able to feed them and stuff. And then, obviously, the baseball program, uh, you know, it's been awesome being able to, to watch that grow and, uh, you know, try to achieve some some cool things. Yes, sir. Uh, and you raised a family here. I know both Bailey and... Cannon. Cannon. And uh, they graduated. They're going to college. How proud of you are them? Yeah. Well, I'm really proud of Bailey because she's out of college. So she's off the payroll. So that makes me really happy. Um, Cannon's here. Uh, he's a redshirt sophomore on the baseball team. Um, should graduate next year and, uh, you know, see see where life takes him. But i uh, been really proud of both those guys. Yes, sir. And he plays for you. How do you – we'll go on to your team. What's your coaching philosophy with all your players and how you balance their academic and athletic life? Well, you know, I think uh, – that's one of those things. It, it, baseball people were real schedule oriented. Um, and so I think that's just sort of the biggest thing is, is get you a schedule, you know, around your classes and around baseball and all that stuff and, and then adhere to it. And, and that's sort of the biggest thing, you know, our guys, uh, traditionally are very, very good, um, in the classroom and, uh, cause it's important to them. And, uh, you know, I think, they want to excel in everything they do, you know, whether that's baseball, school, you know, relationships, whatever. Um, and so we want to attack everything um, with the same vigor and, you know, energy uh, as we do baseball. And uh, if we do that, I feel I got pretty good chance of being successful. Yes, sir. Uh, baseball is very schedule oriented and you're having to go all the time and school I understand my schedule with just working here at Ram Radio and doing this and trying to get to classes on time and everything. That can be frustrating. I don't even travel besides my golf team that's on a weekend. That can be frustrating whenever players are trying to make it. Yeah, I mean, it, I mean, there are times where, you know, you got a lot of different things going on at once. Actually, I think this week is probably one of those weeks because spring break's coming up. Yeah. So a lot of academic stuff uh, getting thrown at them this week. Uh, obviously, it doesn't change our, you know, we have games this weekend that are very important that we need to get ready for. So, 
it just, you know, you, you handle what life puts in front of you and then, and you go do it and, uh, don't make too big a deal out of it. I mean, life's life, you know, and we all get thrown certain, certain hurdles and all that stuff, you know, you get over them. <laughs> yes, sir. And, uh, last week with coach Scott, I, I would say I can be pretty superstitious to a degree. And I think baseball is one of the more like lucky ish, sometimes a little more superstitious. Do you have any superstitions with after wins, after losses, or beforehand? You know, it's weird. Um, I think I used to be Mm -hmm. um, pretty superstitious, and uh, I'm not too much anymore. I'm still, you know, uh, if if you're on a streak and you're doing something that, you know, every day, you probably tend to continue doing it, but nothing specific, um, you know, that I have, and, uh, you know, like I say, just sort of try to prepare and then go execute and do what we can to try to go win. Yes, sir. Let's see, my superstitions, the most they reach is just trying to wear the same thing when the Cowboys play. I was going to say, there's a lot of that. Yes. yes that doesn't even work in the playoffs. <laughs> if you're a Cowboys fan, it definitely doesn't work. Yes, sir. <laughs> and uh, I know we've started out the season. There's some injuries. It's yeah. not the fastest start we've had here. And uh, what are some struggles that y'all have been dealing with I know y'all have to switch position-wise, right. throwing guys around. How's that been? Well, I mean, our biggest struggle is playing good baseball. Uh, you know, we haven't played very good baseball, so therefore, you know, our record's not what it's accustomed to being. Um, however, having said that, you know, I think we've been really spoiled, uh, me as a coach and obviously as a fan base, uh, you know, here the last five, six years, because um, we've been real uh, – we've had a consistent same – you know, same guys. Um uh, that have been year in, year out. And so they're pretty familiar with one another, pretty familiar with what we're trying to do. And uh, obviously a lot of those guys uh, graduated, you know, got opportunities uh, to play in Major League Baseball organizations, all those things. And so it's 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 a different group, and they're still trying to learn and, and just sort of figure it out a little bit. And then obviously, you know, we've had some injuries, but, you know, the guys that have been able to step into those roles have done fantastic um, you know, and I think it's going to make us a better team down the road. But, you know, we've got to, until that time comes, we, you know, to, we got to take care of today. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, like I say, if you look, though, at our history, we're generally, this is about where we're at at the end of February. And then March, we sort of turn it on, and then we generally don't lose when it gets to April and May. And so, uh, you know, that's the plan. Um, and continue working hard and improving and, and, and getting better. And so, uh, you know, we're, we're, we're okay. We'd obviously, like everybody, you want to be undefeated and, and not lose a game ever, but um, we're, we're in a good spot and continue working and improving. Yes, sir. And you talked about y'all are usually at this point into February, and yet you've never had a losing season all your years here. What does that mean to you, being able to never have a losing season? Well, I mean, it means we've had good players, um, you know, uh, that, the not losing season. I mean, I, to me, that's a really low bar, mm-hmm. um, you know, if, if we're just trying to be above mediocre. So that, I mean, we better be, in my opinion. But, uh, you know, it's how many championships do you win and all that stuff is, is sort of what we're shooting for. Mm-hmm. Um, but, uh, you know, we've been consistent, I think, over the years pretty much. And, and so that's a good thing. Yes, sir. And you talked about also in that last question, you've coached some MLB prospects. Last year you had Cade Bragg. He was 17th round and Aaron Munson 19th round, both pitchers. Uh, do you still talk to those guys that have gone on? To yeah, the- actually, we just uh, talked to both of them, not before last. So, you know, they're at spring training. Yeah. Um, you know, it's it's a new experience for them. Um, I think actually they were both facing live hitters tomorrow for the first time um, during spring training. So, uh, you know, it's exciting to see uh, players go go chase their dream and uh, sort of see that journey and, and know you had a small part in it. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, I expect great things out of both those guys. Trent Baker, uh, you know, a few years ago, but, you know, he's should be double A this year with the Cardinals and so he's getting, you know, it's a long road, you know, but he's getting closer and closer to that step being in the major leagues. And, you know, that's what 
all little kids when they first start playing baseball dream and aspire to. And so it's really cool when somebody uh, can actually achieve that goal. Yes, sir. And uh, Cade Bragg and Aaron Munson on the team last year. I know everybody's waiting for us to get to it. 2023 National Championship. Yeah. Uh, so last year y'all won. Could you share some insights on what the team went through to clinch that title, some adversity, and what y'all overcame? Yeah, you know, and that's the crazy thing. We talk about this all the time. We didn't really have much adversity. It was, uh, it, it, which is really unusual in any season. Um, you know, we had made just some little stuff, but nothing big. Um, had a couple injuries, you know, we had to overcome, but those guys got back pretty quick. And so they were just little bumps in the road, I think. That team last year, what made them so special um, was just their consistency. Consistency in how they work, consistency in how they played, consistency in how they would react to different situations. They were just the same guys all the time, and therefore they were really good because they were consistent. And it, it, it was really fun um, being able to just sit back and watch them play because they were, uh, no doubt, um, I don't care what level you play. We were the best team at playing baseball in the country, and it wasn't close. I think I don't have it written down. Y'all were 53-9. and nine with, Yeah. I know y'all didn't hit double-digit losses. Right, which and is amazing. So that's what I was like. Adversity, it didn't seem like they yeah. they were just better than it. it. I was shocked every time there was a loss yeah. whenever I looked at the schedule. So were we. <laughs> yes, sir. But uh, that national championship, how are y'all feeling right now going into it again? I I don't think anybody else is going to be able to compete with y'all later on in the season. Well, I mean, you hope so. Um, you know, we've got obviously a lot of things we've got to improve on to to get to that level. Um, but, you know, the modern sports is, is get in the playoffs, right? And then, then you get in the playoffs and anything can happen. Um, you know, we're hoping we continue to, to improve uh, every game, every week. And if we can continue to do that, we've got a really good shot of being where we feel like we need to be to to have a chance to to go defend that thing. Yes, sir. And I know here at Angelo State, I feel like we have a really rich tradition of athletic success. Um, do y'all, all the coaches, do y'all collaborate much on just building a winning, successful program? Or well, I think yeah, I think we're you know we've got a lot of really good coaches here, um, and you know. Uh, I know there, there are times where, you know, a fresh set of eyes or just, you know, hey, I really like the way this team does that. I mean, you know, I go watch other teams practice, see if I can, you know, get better um, learning from from those guys. And so I think that's something that all of us, you know, we have a passion um, for, for trying to be the best coaches we can be. And uh, part of that's continuing to learn. And, and we're very lucky and that we have some really great resources that are here in other sports. And um, so I think we all uh, pick each other's brain and, and you know, try to improve and get better at what we do. Yes, sir. And earlier you spoke about you played at Baylor, and that has obviously affected how you coach. Did you have a coach there at Baylor or any other time in your career that really helped you as a player and you still look up to them and some things you do today? Oh, yeah. I mean, I would say every coach um, that I played for and or worked for um, has definitely had some type of influence uh, upon me uh, in how we do things. So, again, you know, I'm probably not the most uh, original idea guy. So, you know, everything we do is probably stolen from, from somebody. Um, and so I would say every person uh, that I've had the, you know, fortune of being able to play for or work for uh definitely taking things and then that we use here today yes sir and um uh, after you graduated and play finished college ball at baylor you went on to coach at let's see here you went to hardin simmons university of texas san antonio university of incarnate word and you're an assistant coach at texas texas a&m as well yeah um how much do you think that time really affected what you do here at the D2 level, because those are so incarnate words of D1. It is now. It wasn't back then. Okay. But, yeah, um, you know, I think when you're young, um, first of all, you're just sort of trying to figure out what you're supposed to do. So there's a lot of mistakes made. Um, 
but you know, it's, you're sort of in the trenches, so to speak. And, you know, it teaches you how to work hard, um, more than anything and, and understand, you know, you're not going to get very far in this business, uh, if you're not willing to, to put in a lot of hours and, and do a lot of work. And so, um, I think that's the biggest thing. Um, and then being able, you know, to sort of start networking and making contacts and, and all those things that are really important uh, in the world of recruiting. Um, and so, you know, all those uh, experiences for me were, were very, very valuable, um, you know, and got to be around some great people and, and learn a lot of stuff. Yes, sir. And uh, you, were, you were never a head coach anywhere before Angela State, nope. correct? No. Nope. So what was that like? You got the job here. You moved your family out here to Angelo, San Angelo. What was what was it like whenever you took over a brand new baseball program and you got to have the keys to it? Um. Well, you know, so one thing in that is, you know, in the summer and stuff, um, you know, I'd coach select teams or whatever, especially in San Antonio. That was a big way for us to sort of get in um, while recruiting some of the better kids. And so had done it with that. Um, to me, the college in the summer are no different. Um, you know, whatever you're doing at the time, it is the big time. And, uh, you know, and so I approached it that way and really, you know, learned some lessons along the way uh, there. But, uh, you know, it, it was really cool um, being able to start the program here because, you know, unfortunately, everything that's wrong, my fault. I mean, it, it, I can't blame it on the guy before me. Um, you know, and then hopefully we've done some good things and there's some things right too, but, uh, it, it, it was, it's a very unique opportunity, uh, that not a lot of people have and, uh, very blessed to do it. And, you know, hopefully we've been able to make some positive contributions to the school. Yes, sir. And you were talking about some select teams you've coached and I found one, which it was 1995 when you coached this team. Okay. The Hayes Larks. Yeah, in, that's in summer college. Oh, summer but, college. Dip, yes, sir. But y'all finished second place behind the 1996 USA Baseball Olympic team. Yeah. What was that coaching experience like whenever you made it to the championship? Yeah. And you had to face those guys. Well, it was awesome, you know. So Skip Bertman was uh, the coach, you know, the honor, uh, legendary coach at uh, LSU and um, you know, had a host of, of big leaguers on that team. And, you know, we're, we're, we're just a normal, solid college summer team. You know, we did have players from all over the country. Um, and we played them early. And so generally, so the Olympics were the next year in Atlanta. Um, and so generally there was an international tournament. Um, that year there wasn't. So Team USA played in the NBC World Series, which used to be the biggest amateur summer thing uh in the summers and so that was awesome you know and so they beat us pretty soundly uh earlier in the tournament um and then we fought our way back and got to the finals and uh you know it it, it is awesome uh we actually got in a brawl with team usa and uh which is sort of crazy and team usa got booed it, it, they were there the crowd was definitely on our side and it was funny the guy that Casey Blake uh, was third baseman. He played at Wichita State, and we're playing in Wichita, Kansas. So this is so his home hometown fans turned on him. Um, you know, we were the underdogs for sure, and uh, you know, leading that game, going to the bottom of the eighth, and uh, we we were right there, and just uh, came up a little short. Matt Lacroix hit a two out, uh, three RBI triple uh, in the eighth, and uh, so. But it was really cool. And then, um, you know, the next summer uh, I got to go to Atlanta uh, and watch those guys uh, compete in the Olympics. And I think they ended up winning the, the bronze. So, uh, but, yeah, that it, once in a lifetime thing and a really cool memory. And you said there was a brawl. Yeah. Coach, tell me, were you were you in the middle of that? Did you... No, no, you just try to separate them. You know, and that's the thing. I mean, everything's changed now. You know, when I played, we'd probably get in six or seven a year. Um, now, you know, that's a death sentence. Everybody's awful and because they're not brawls. I mean, nobody fights. You go out there and stand there and hug your friend for a little bit and then everybody walks back. You know, it's a lot of posturing. Um, you know, something not in the game anymore because I guess, I don't know, maybe people actually really do fight. Anyway, but, uh, yeah, it was just, just again, man, you got two teams competing, want to win. Sometimes, uh, 
you know, gets emotional. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Do you have a favorite brawl from an MLB? Like from Nolan, MLB? When Nolan Ryan whooped on that batter. That or Robin Ventura. Yes, sir. Uh, yeah, that's uh, all Texas fans. That's a good one. Um, you know, when uh, Odor punched out Batista, I think is another one that everybody, if you're a Ranger fan, uh, enjoys. So, uh, yeah. Um, no, I, I I could say the the ones that uh, I was a part of as a player were were so non. And there was no action. You know, it was just everybody run out there and act like you're tough. You know, mm-hmm. probably not. And you said the coach of that 1996 uh, Olympic baseball team, Skip Burtman. Yeah. Legendary coach. Last year, you got to win the uh, Skip Burtman Coach of the Year from the College Foundation. Yeah. How was that, winning that, after you coached against him? Yeah. Um, that was awesome. It was really unexpected. Um, so that, uh, you know, that award's given to, to the the top college coach uh, in the country, regardless of division. And, uh, you know, I, I, I was just sitting at home and I got a call from, uh, one of the guys at the college baseball hall of fame. And, uh, anyway, we were talking about saying, he's like, Hey, and you won this. And I'm like, Oh, I mean, I really, I was overwhelmed, uh, with that. Cause, uh, you know, it, it pretty cool deal. And I think it just says so much about Adam Foster, Sam Moat, you know, Riley Peterson, uh, Jonathan Del Rosario, our, our, our assistants, and then just our players. Um, and then the university. I mean, I think it says, uh, hopefully it's a great honor for Angelo State as well. And, uh, yeah, so that was one of the cooler things i uh, gotten, gotten to be a part of. And last week, Coach Scott's uh, 2004 National Championship team, they got put in the Hall of Honor. Are you excited to come back in, I guess, the year 2043? to put this team in the Hall of Honor. I figure I'll be dead by then. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I don't know. We'll see if they, they if we get in, I, you know. Um, if so, that'd be a cool thing. You know, I was just um, watching just the other night, uh, you know, needed some inspiration. So I uh, was watching a little Survive in Advance on uh, Jim Balvano. And, you know, I think one thing that was really cool about that team, and I think it's important and made me think of it is, you know, you ask five years from now who won the national championship in baseball in D2 in 23, and I think there'll be many people going to be able to tell you. Um, and so uh, I think one thing they did, uh, and they got together once a year, that team, and so uh, we're going to try to do that every year. Um, that way it's not forgotten because uh, I know it was a big deal in every every one of those guys' lives um, as well as mine, and so uh, hopefully it's something that, that uh, can still, you know, stay relevant, you know, even though we get 10 years, 20 years, 30 years down the road. And you were talking about somebody will forget, somebody will forget this national championship team in five years, but you've coached here. You're going to remember every year. Yeah. How many players or moments that just stand out over the last 18 to 20 years? Oh, man. Well, yeah, I think there are a ton. I think the, the, the you know, I can go on for hours on this, but Probably one of the first ones was uh, 2007, when, which, which was the first team to make it to the World Series. And, and that team was real similar to this team. I mean, injury after injury after injury. And they just kept the, whoever was next, step up and do a great job. Uh, Michael Gunner, I remember his pitching performance, that whole, you know, conference tournament and the regionals and in the World Series. Um, you know, just... Clay Calfee with some huge hits. Um, like I say, I can go on and on and on. I can tell you each year, uh, you know, probably for something pretty significant. But that's that's one of the first ones uh, that comes to mind. Do you have anyone, a few guys this year, you said your injury, do you have any guys that are just, you think are stepping out and just stepping up in the moments this year so far? You know, I think Trip Clark's uh, really, you know, a lot's been laid on his shoulders um, due to, He's having to carry the load a little more than than we would like, but you know he's done a great job offensively of of driving in runs, and that that's his main job. And he's been very consistent at it and very good. And so uh, hopefully that continues for us. Mm-hmm. And we have MLB starting up. Yeah, and I know you're a huge Rangers fan. Huge. Are you going to try and make some games this year? We'll see. Uh, you know, I got to go uh, to the playoff clincher uh, last year in the Orioles in the wild card round. 
Um, and so that was, that was really good. Um, gets, gets sort of busy. Um, obviously during their season, we're sort of busy, but, um, you know, they're, they're, they're hit pretty hard right now with some injuries and stuff yep. too. So hopefully they can stay above water, uh, till we get the guys back around the all-star break and then, uh, maybe have another run. Cause, uh, you know, that as a fan, you know, that was, that was, that was awesome. It was awesome. And for us and the Rangers to win in the same year was uh, really cool. Well, that, that would be a cool moment. Yeah. I remember last year, I guess, right before y'all won y'all's national championship, I like the Astros, TCU, and the Cowboys. Right. Astros had won. TCU was going on to the College World Series. For uh, football, they had the oh yeah, it's the play. they made national that. championship, which yeah we don't talk about that one. And I was for sure the Cowboys were going to do something. So oh, you and all the Cowboy <laughs> fans, there it's going to happen. Well, I have a little bit of life left in me. It's bound to happen by some point. All right, good luck to y'all. Uh, y'all, y'all are delusional. <laughs> uh, do you uh, ever coach summer league for college though? I know some How? players go up. Yeah, now, no, I don't. I mean, we're just too busy uh, with, you know, trying to get our stuff. Um, still think that that is truly one of the most, like, it just enjoyable experiences ever. Um, you know, when I'm done here, whether that's, I don't know how soon that is, but, uh, you know, probably would like to go do that again because it's just, it's pure uh, baseball and, and obviously not as much uh, – pressure with school going on mm-hmm. and just all the things you know guys can go concentrate only on baseball and so it's a it's a really great experience mm-hmm. and hopefully you were saying you don't know how much longer you'll be here hopefully we can get that team into the hall of honor like we were talking about before you leave yeah well i mean we'll see you know like I say if they they deem more worthy it'd be be awesome to get there i'll try to start a petition for front of that man yes sir and um I know NIL, we can't go into specifics for sure, and we're D2. Do you think that's affected your recruiting at all with other schools maybe making a push towards it? Well, you know, I think um, – so baseball, um, you know, is a partial scholarship sport. Mm-hmm. And so I think when you talk about the NIL, even, you know, not maybe at the, the high the LSUs and the Texases, but um, most, I think – usage of NIL is basically just to cover that scholarship money because, you know, all our guys are paying several, you know, thousands and thousands of dollars to, to go play, you know, and that's, that's the one thing that, you know, is baseball, the NCAA, for whatever reason, not a big fan of it. And I don't know why, um, you know, our guys that go and get drafted generally with their signing bonus, they're paying off loan. Mm -hmm. Um, and so, you know, we're one of the the few sports that uh, you know our our star players are, are paying lots of money to to go to school and play. Um, so, you know, the hope is uh, that maybe that scholarship uh, max gets increased uh, by the NCAA and just allows uh, a lot more players to not go into debt. But um, I don't think the NIL has affected us one way or the other. Mm-hmm. Um, at D2, um, I think at the, you know, mid-major, uh, colleges at division one, I, I think it's affected, um, because they, most of them don't have the money. So getting a guy that would be their star, the you know, the big schools go make him their 16th pitcher and, and pay for everything. So, uh, I don't think there's as much parity. I think it's going to get less and less as we continue to go forward. Mm-hmm. And, uh, I don't know how many y'all have transferred in but we'll we'll talk about that at a different time i think they're telling me to wrap this up okay hate to interrupt you coach but uh guys thanks for watching ram zone this week live on facebook we had coach kevin brooks 2023 national championship and skip bertman coach of the year award winner and after spring break we'll be ready to bring in another coach for an interview so